Isaiah chapter 6. I'm not getting out of this lesson. Uh -oh. <laughs> what kind of person can God use? I'm just I need to get you on this lesson. That was last time. You missed it. Yeah, it was last week, wasn't it? Isaiah chapter 6. There is um, there's two there's there's two uh, there is two um, outlines. Let me give you one outline of the chapter. If you're taking notes, the vision, the vision, verses four through seven, the voice verses 8 through 10, and the vindication, 11 through verse 13. The vision, the voice, the vindication. That will be worth 20 points in the, in the answer. <laughs> Let me give you the circumstances. Let me give you, this is another outline. This is the circumstances. Can you repeat that, the voice, the what, and the vindication? The division, the voice, and the vindication. And then I want to give you the circumstances of the chapter. The circumstances of the chapter. The call, verses 1. I'm glad people come up with this stuff. Number, uh, next is the cry, verses 3 to 4. The coal, C-O-L, C-O-A-L. You remember the coal in verse 6 and 7? The, the, the hot coal that was on his lips. And then verse 11 is, uh, verse 10 is his commission. His commission, verse 9 and 10. And then the cities, verse 11 through verse 13. The call is verse 1. The call, the cry, the coal, C-O-A-L. And the cities, and then the commission. Our commission in the city. The cry the cities are the last one. Yeah. City or city. Cities. C I T I S. Verse one is for the call. Verse yes. nine and ten is the commission, but I didn't get cry and cold. Cry is three and four. Twelve, six, and seven. And the city is eleven. Eleven, thirteen. Mm -hmm. I was when I was in here Sunday, and in Sunday, when I was in here, we were in here in Bible study, and we were going and, and we were reading verses, and I was. Asking you, what is that? Verse, what is the verse saying? And I think probably it would be it would it would be good because to have at least a little understanding of how to interpret a verse. How do you interpret? I'm not going to do it tonight because I haven't I haven't got it before me. How do we interpret a verse? If we open the text, if we open the Bible, and the, 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 the thing that we really should not do that I ask you to do when we're going through uh, and I give like we was asking you about the Holy Spirit and I had nine I had nine uh, nine personalities of the Holy Spirit and then when I got to that verse it was right in the middle of a text and right in the middle of a chapter and I'm saying what does that verse say well that really is not the way you want to interpret scripture because it's very likely that you can interpret, you can, you can turn to any verse in Scripture and almost make it say what you want it to say and, and have the wrong application to the text. And so it's, it's much easier to start from verse 1 and go down, but we don't do that. So here again, when I give you this outline, what is good that someone else has done, I didn't do it, is like the vision, the voice, and the vindication, the V's, when you know that verses 4 through 1, 4 through 1, 4 and 7 is, is a vision, then you know someone has already recognized it's a vision that Isaiah has, and then verses 8 and 10 is the call, the voice, I mean, the voice. And uh, that God brings out of God, and then the vindication, and then you go back and you look at the other the circumstance. What are the circumstances in this chapter? 
in chapter 6, what are the circumstances that are we finding in this chapter? It's asking the right questions of the chapter. What are the circumstances in this chapter that's going to help me understand what this verse, what the chapter is all about? And then you see, when you say the call, there's a call that's going to take place in this chapter. God's going to call Isaiah. And then there's the cry of Isaiah. And then there's the coal, which is the coal that, that, that the, the angel poured, put on his, hot, his lips. It's hot. And then the cities and so forth. So that's interesting. Uh, the, we could look at this first of all is, is, is another aspect of this is the holiness of God and the sinfulness of Israel the holiness of God and the sinfulness of Israel as you've already seen that in the first five chapters all we have seen was the sinfulness of Israel Isaiah was careful to point out just how bad a nation Israel was. I mean, Israel was, it wasn't bad in the sense of, yes it was. You know, we talk about how bad America is. You know? I don't know, and, and if you want to look at certain aspects of it, you can say it's bad. In relationship to what? Uh, but in Israel's time, it really was bad. And I'm sure it wasn't 100%. Everybody in the, in, the, in the world at that time was bad. But all we saw was that God had had enough. And he had pronounced judgment on Israel. And Israel was about to go down into captivity. And he had his prophets to come to warn them, not if they straighten up, he would solve. He, he said, it is coming. It's too late. You are going into captivity. That's it. There's no getting out of it. There's no repentance now. You're in for it. But he sent, but he called Isaiah to be a prophet to proclaim the gospel even then to the most wicked people there were. I mean, they were wicked in the sense they didn't obey God. They weren't wicked in the sense of their immorality, per se, and yet that was true, too. But they, they, were, they were probably the saints compared to the other nations around them. But see, God doesn't judge people on how bad they, He judges people based on their morality towards Him. They were prosperous. They were rich. They had houses. They built houses side by side. They had a lot of prosperity and a lot of profit, but the problem was they didn't obey God. They didn't worship God. So it's not that they were bad, that they had it bad. They were living pretty, pretty prosperous. But they weren't living for God. And that's why God ordained Israel to be, to be, a, be, a, to be a spokesman for God to the other nations. And they wanted to be like the other nations. So the background of the call, he is, a, he, is, he is a religious and devout man and probably a member of the school of the prophets, well instructed in the faith of his fathers. And can I share with you, God prepares a person to be what he's going to call him to do. God prepares a person before he calls them. They, they, and so he already was in the school of the prophets and probably a member of that school, and he was well instructed in the faith of his fathers, and he was familiar with the sacred rituals of the temple, and possibly he was looking forward to a prophetic career, yet feeling the deep responsibility which it was involved, perhaps uh, pleading earnestly to be fit for the mission. And, and sometimes, you know, I, that's all I saw in my life for the first time. All, of, all I saw from, from the time I was born to my father died, all I saw was the ministry. I saw my dad work in the ministry, so it was always on my mind. And I kept thinking, I could never do that. I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if I could do that. And sometimes, we, sometimes you get the idea, well, that's what the Lord wants you to do. When in fact my dad says, if you want to do anything else, please do it. He said, don't be a daddy called preacher. 
Because he says, if you don't believe, if he says, if God doesn't call you, believe me, you won't be in this business very long. And I didn't understand what he meant by that at 19 years old. And, and so I didn't know whether or not I was even capable of doing it. And probably Isaiah was reared in that atmosphere, and he did not, he, you know, he saw, he didn't know whether or not he was capable of doing that. And so, when God, so God is preparing you, even when you're not even really knowing it. Everything He prepared me for that. Then when, 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 then where I would get prepared is when I went to seminary. So, the response. So He, while at the same time. He sees the unsatisfactory condition of his people. He saw they weren't responding to, to God's command. He had a burden of the Israel because he knew they were in trouble because they were not complying to the law of God. I mean, they had, a tr they had trouble doing that. And outwardly, outward profession of religiousness and readiness is commonly with ceremonial demands of faith. And sometimes I think a lot of these people go through the ceremonial aspect of it. They just go through the ceremonial. You see the, the priest and, and you see all these people that go through it. It's, 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 it's ceremonious. It's, it's, it's not from the heart. It's because it's part of the process. And it's an outward profession. And uh, yet he discerned the presence and the barren of formanism and hypocrisy. He saw the hypocrisy of what was going on. You know, they performed, they, they performed their activity. They performed their rituals. They performed their sacrifice. Priests did it because it was their job to do it, but he saw the hypocrisy of it. He saw that they just was doing it because it was a job. This is not a job. It's a passion. It's a ministry. And if, if, if you don't, if, if this is not your passion, you won't stay in it long. The Lord gives you every opportunity to get out. He normally, he normally, get, he normally tests you when your faith is at its lowest end. You know, he, he, he and the devil knows, uh, he devil doesn't know it. The devil doesn't need to know a lot of things. That it's just normal that, that you are going to be tested and so he saw the hypocrisy that even though they were going through all these rituals and they were offered sacrifices, and you remember Jesus says, God said, and what was it, Isaiah? He said, I'm tired of seeing your obligations. I'm, st I'm tired of seeing your sacrifices. I want you. They gave their alms, and they, gave their, they, they showed up for church, and they showed up for sacrifices, and they brought the lamb, but it had no effect in their lives at all. 